Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. This is our session two of the Mind Body Miracles series. So, welcome. I'm going to have a really special guest today to share her story um, with, you know, her journey through this work with with all different kinds of illnesses, diagnoses, uh, a lot of struggle with depression, um, and has just really embodied this so beautifully. And someone who is actually also uh, assisting me on my team now and is a, a friend and someone I just absolutely adore. Um, so this has been a series that we're doing um, to bring people a more specific examples of not just how mind body medicine works or how the body can heal yourself, but actual experiences of people who've come through this journey and applied this work, specifically working with me in the Embracing Health program, which is my year long um, program where I bring a, a group of individuals through this work in a very um, connected way. Um, and we've had, you know, so many people share their testimonials um, from that program. And I thought this would be a really powerful thing to bring people more of a um, an example of what the journey's like, right? Because it's all one thing to hear, like your body can heal itself and, you know, resolve all kinds of things. But it's another thing to really understand what the journey can look like, because for no one has it been this smooth, instant pop into a new consciousness. It's almost always that, that we have to meet our doubts, that we have to meet our deepest fears, that we have to meet all the stuff we're carrying that isn't aligned with that truth so that we can, um, allow it to resolve so it's it no longer is hijacking us so i would love to hear where you're tuning in from hello beautiful Gemma. hello with uh, someone in facebook from montreal from the philippines hello barb jeria from vancouver so glad to see you here hello liam ellen oh we have alicia here Awesome. Hi. So I want to I want to welcome uh, and introduce Alicia Capani. She is in uh, Canada and but is a member of my team. We have a virtual team where we all work together. She's been participating in this work for several years now, and I first met her and heard her story when she actually came to do one of my group retreats and told me that she had struggled with severe depression, suicidality. Um, doctors want to put her on medications therapy, all kinds of things they were doing. And she's like, wait a minute, what else is possible? And um, use this work and is no longer suffering from depression. And so I thought this was a great story and there's so many other things she has to share about this journey. So welcome, Alicia. Thanks, I'm so glad to be here and share my story. Hold on. You can't hear me? I can't hear you yet. Maybe it's- hmm. Okay. Let me try. Can you hear me now? Uh, hang on. Maybe if you go out and come back in again. Okay. Okay. Let's see what we get. Hang on a few minutes. So here we go. Okay. Can you hear me now? Nope. It's not working. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll come in on a. Can you guys hear her? Oh, I can hear her. Oh, I Let's can't hear you? her. Oh. <laughs> you know what we could do? Jess, I mean, Alicia, if you want to call so I can hear you here and then we can just record it. Sure. Like, or I, I can, can hear come you in on another computer. Will that work? Why don't it delayed. You can try it. Okay. Hello. You guys can hear it. And you can hear me as well. Hi. So do you want to put, do you have an earphone or something? So. You can hear me okay in the computer? I can hear you, can you hear me? All right, just put your phone volume down so it doesn't come through the computer and then I'll listen to you through here. Just put your phone where it is. Okay, so you can hear me. Can you hear me? Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Perfect, okay. <laughs> awesome. We'll play with technology sometimes, we figure it out, we're all good. Okay. Okay. So welcome, welcome. And why don't you share a little bit of like your story and how you found this work, what you found with this. Okay. Um, so yeah, I had depression for a really long time. I went through so many different phases with it. 
I had it for about four or five years, but it really started when I was like 22 in my last semester of university. Um, and at first I like really didn't know what was happening and I just thought it would pass. Like I thought maybe it was cause I was graduating and maybe felt like I didn't have a purpose in my life anymore or I had like started taking birth control. So I thought maybe it was just like my hormones. So I really just like didn't think anything of it and I thought it would pass. Um, and all I really noticed at first was like, I couldn't focus, I couldn't concentrate. Like I, before I had depression, I would like always be studying and like you couldn't pull me away from studying. And then once I started having depression, I would just be like staring out the window when I was studying or if I was at work, I would just be like staring at my screen. Like I had no motivation, I didn't care and I couldn't focus. And I just felt like really, really down all the time. Um, but I didn't really think anything of it until I went to Europe for like a month after I graduated. And when I was like in some of the most beautiful places I'd ever been in my life, I was like so unhappy. Yeah. <sighs> um, yeah. It's good. It's good to see this because this is what we do. It's an expectation. Instead of letting ourselves feel what we feel, we have these ideas that we should be feeling X, Y, and Z. That the suppression, it's learned. We learn to suppress the organic expression. And it, and it I think for a lot of us, you can reply if you're, you know, if, if you're resonating with this as a listener. Um, yeah, I do relate. I've been there. I've been there as well. And I remember in being in Disney World with my boyfriend's family. And I, I was so miserable. I thought, well, this is highlighting it for me, isn't it? There's something really wrong with me. <laughs> and that yeah. like adds more layers to the equation we're in. Cause now we're really suppressing and making ourselves wrong. And it's really hard. Yeah. That's when I really started noticing that like something's off, you know? Um, and then I, I wasn't really doing anything about it for the first year. Again, I just thought it was going to pass until um, the relationship I was in ended. And so on top of the fact that I was already feeling uh, really low, then when that ended, I was feeling even worse. So that's when I actually went to my doctor because I didn't really know what else to do. And because they're you know, taught a pharmaceutical model, obviously what she told me to do was to go on antidepressants um, and to start seeing a psychiatrist. So I did that for about a year. I was, I tried like four different antidepressants and like I wasn't feeling anything. So they just like kept increasing my dosage and putting me on more and like on multiple ones at once. Like I think I was on like three at one point. And then um, I tried that for about a year and I, I didn't feel anything. Luckily I didn't have any side effects either. Um, and I was doing the type of therapy that they recommended, which was like CBT therapy, which is cognitive behavior therapy for those of you that don't know what that is. And it's not like that isn't helpful because like it's trying to change your thoughts, but I felt like it was just another way to not feel what I was feeling and just go bypass straight to let's change your thoughts. So I still wasn't feeling what I was feeling and it just wasn't resonating with me and i felt like it was being like forced on me like when i would go to see my psychiatrist he would be like like okay so that wasn't working so then i started trying other things and when i told him i was trying other things he was like why are you trying other things like just take your medication and do cbt like that's oh, what yeah and oh no yeah my doctor is getting frustrated with me saying like why are you so resistant to taking medication like just do it and what I wish I knew in that moment was that heavy light thing that you talk about, that when something feels heavy, yeah. like it's not your path, it's not what your body's asking for. And like, I remember the first time I took an antidepressant, I just like sat there crying because I didn't want to take it. And I wish I knew that that was my body telling me, like, this is not what I'm asking for, you know? Um. So yeah, I was doing that and it wasn't working. It wasn't feeling better. And they were making me feel so bad that I even wanted to try something else. Um, but then I started- They made you feel like it's somehow you're deficient that you're looking outside the box for other yeah. possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And 
I was like so desperate to heal at one point, like after that relationship had officially ended, because that was kind of giving me some like temporary joy, like conditional joy yeah. for a while. Yeah. So when I didn't have that anymore is when I was like so desperate to heal. So that's when I really started trying all these other things. So I was trying like EMDR, um, acupuncture, hypnosis. I was even trying EFT. I was working with a couple different EFT practitioners. But because I was doing all those things to make my pain go away, like nothing shifted. Even though I was trying some things that are actually really powerful, like EFT, I still like didn't see any sort of shift. Um, and that's when I was spending like thousands on therapy every month because I was trying all this at once because I just really wanted to heal. Wow. Um, and that's when my psychiatrist was like, why are you spending all this money on this other stuff? Like, just do what works, you know? But clearly that was not what my body was asking for. So I'm glad I didn't listen to him. And that was the moment I stopped seeing him when it felt so heavy and suppressive because I felt like I was being like forced into something that didn't resonate with me. And that's when I stopped seeing my psychiatrist and I went off my medication. I was able to just stop taking it because I wasn't feeling anything from it or side effects. But I know people do recommend that you like weed off it, but I personally didn't need to do that. Um, so well, and this is also a, a good time to insert, like mm -hmm. there can be so many different modalities and it's always about, does this resonate for me? Does, is this a yes for me? Which mm -hmm. you can't really know unless you really tune in and listen, because yeah. if you're in the mind, you're like, yeah, this is good because oh, this, this is a good idea. I'm going to, this is going to be the thing. But it's actually, I'm just outrunning the tiger. It's not the same as real peace. So the yeah. yes, we've got to kind of develop the um, ability, the, the practice of tuning into the yes, tuning into ourselves, tuning into our wisdom so we can have that awareness. And then it may be, like you said, cognitive behavioral therapy can be a great thing or even medications. But if it's not for you, you're going to know it's going to feel heavy or mm -hmm. like literally any modality, whether it's like a diet or exercise regime could be like the greatest thing. But then for another person, it's like, oh, this is, just feels like a lot of work. This just feels really complex. Is that really mm -hmm. my path? So you've got to look for yourself at what your wisdom has to say on it. Exactly. And Liam yeah. says, I'm trained as a CBT therapist, cognitive behavioral therapy. And I agree, this type of therapy can tend to ignore emotions. Yeah. So. I really felt like it. I still wasn't meeting my pain. It was just, it was like managing. That's really the difference between this work and everything I tried before that just felt like manage what you're feeling and go on with life. But I wasn't really meeting what was coming up for me. Um, so I was trying all that stuff, but because I was trying it to make my pain go away, I still wasn't seeing any sort of relief. Um, and I just kept thinking that if something changed on the outside, that I would feel better. Yeah. Like if I was in another relationship or if I had work that I really enjoyed. And so an opportunity came up to take this job in the field where you work like 12 to 16 hours a day and you live in a camp where you're constantly surrounded by people like you like live together. And I was like, you know what? I just want a drastic change in my life. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> but it was... Um, like you call it, it was just moving the parts around. I still wasn't meeting. Aww. Gotta look at this comment. Cause that's Gemma. Gemma's nine. Hi, I Gemma. mean, that's just so cool. <laughs> I hope to meet you one day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I just wanted a drastic change in my life. Cause I thought that that would make me feel better. And I do notice that with a lot of people, they think if they just change something on the outside that then they'll feel better. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried that and I did temporarily feel better because I was distracted like all the time. I was working all the time. I was never alone only for like a few minutes per day at the end of the day when I would just shower and go to bed. Was I actually alone? So I was just so distracted from my pain that um, I didn't really feel it as much. And that was kind of or I thought working for me. And it was actually at that point that I found your work. And I mm. think the reason that I opened to receive your work is because I had let go of the desperation to heal. I had stopped all of the therapy, stopped all the medication, and I was no longer desperate to heal. Mm. Even though I was still in resistance and just trying to distract myself from my pain, there was still a shift in consciousness there where I released a desperation. And oh. I think that's why I was able to open to receive your work. 
when I found you, I was like at the point where I didn't want to try anything else. I was like, I'm not spending another penny on therapy. It doesn't work. Um, but for some reason you resonated with me and I did your instant elevation program first. And that really helped me because it had me not distract from my pain as much, even though I was still kind of doing that. Mm-hmm. I would at least tune into my body a little bit more than I was yeah. before. So then I started to feel lighter. Yeah, which yeah. is really a key to start that journey with the inner wisdom that we even know it's there. And you're like, all right, let me just 2% connect with it, tune in a little more than I am and let something else in. You know, it's yeah. like if we're seeing with the 3D, the virtual reality goggles, then everything in that virtual reality is our whole reality. And we're like not really connected with the true reality. So we're trying to navigate this space, not realizing it's a reflection of what we're holding or the tension that we're holding or the fear that we're holding. And Mm -hmm. an interesting thing is like what you said with, you did all these different therapies, but the premise of all of them is there's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, no matter what I'm doing, I'm in the same frequency. I'm in the same consciousness of there's something wrong with me. So when, when I dealt with severe depression, it was years and years and years and years. And it was always that same thing of like, resisting what I was feeling, suppressing what I'm feeling, which just makes the depression <laughs> louder. Mm-hmm. And and everyone that I had gone to, and this was, um, I guess, college after college, it was very much the same thing. And it was always this platform. They were standing in the foundation of there's something wrong with me. And I definitely believed that for many, mm-hmm. many years. Obviously, I function outside the box and didn't think like most people. And of course, we're really taught in society that you know, you either conform to the standard or there's something wrong with you, but don't worry, we have the solution and we'll get you back on track. Nobody actually has ever in history of humanity gotten back in track and, and authentically felt alive, healthy, whole from that approach. Mm-hmm. So I, I really applaud you for, for letting that in. And the, the other thing is that um, when we're in that realm, we are victim. Like this thing's happening yeah. to me, there's something's wrong, something wrong with me. Let me get a fix. Let me get a hit. Let me get a high. Let me get in a relation. Let me get a distraction. Let me mm-hmm. overwork. Everything is so I can escape this premise. You know, I can escape yeah. this obvious thing that there's something wrong with me and I'm a victim. So I think it, you've really come a long way from that as well. Yeah. And I was even like blaming my outer circumstances. Like that was the reason I had depression that my relationship, my boyfriend was the reason I had depression. And if he would just be a better boyfriend, if he just showed me that he cared that then I wouldn't have depression, which was so not the case because he was just reflecting what I was holding and bringing it to the surface. Um, But yeah, I guess I kind of had that victim mentality. Like it's something outside of me, blaming the thing outside of me. That's the reason I have depression, not realizing that that can be a relief like a temporary relief because you're ruminating over if I could just get my boyfriend to blah, 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 blah. And then when I'm busy on that track, I'm not as deep in the heaviness of the depression. So it does feel like a relief, but it actually won't create a resolution. You just have to keep finding more reasons to fix and more reasons to blame. Yeah. And so why don't you share about what actually did um, make make the difference? Because I, I remember when I met you, you had said that you had it had a resolution and i thought that was amazing because i know that program is like a diy home study program you know you it's a downloaded program you do on your own essentially and i love when people will tell me that the book like just changed their lives and they don't have illness anymore you know you don't have to necessarily invest tons of time or tons of money like you can just let this in in any way yeah yeah when i started doing the instant elevation program i instantly started to feel lighter really for the sole reason that thanks laura (laughs) um i started to feel lighter because i was no longer in resistance because all depression is is stuck energy or stuck emotions like you don't want to feel your what you're feeling that's really all it is so if you release resistance the energy can move so that's what the instant elevation program did for me was it had me actually tune into my body and allow myself to feel what I was feeling, which I wasn't doing with all the other types of therapy I was doing. It was just make my pain go away, make my pain go away. So that's why I instantly started to feel lighter when I just allowed myself to feel what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. But then when I started doing 
Well, that tells us a lot, that right there. Like that's when we understand that stuck energy and specifically it's like I've suppressed the wrongness. I feel wrong and something wrong with me, but let me suppress that and just try harder. Or we have shame or, you know, it's usually unconscious. So you probably can't even name it, but you suppress it. And like, let me compensate for that. Let me try to get a better job or make more money or make people like me or be prettier, like fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. It's a duality of I'm, I'm not, I don't accept myself fully. There's something wrong with me. And let me make up for that by doing this dance. So it becomes exhausting, but also becomes limiting because it, we don't actually escape the heaviness no matter how hard we try. Yeah. Yeah. And I wish that I knew that it wasn't coming up just to be suppressed again. Like that doesn't make sense. Why would it come up just to be pushed back down? Like, I wish I knew that it was coming up to show me where I was out of alignment from, you know, all the possibilities that were available to me, my true nature, which is love and joy and abundance. Like it was happening to like guide me back to that. I feel like that's the reason that any illness or disease happens is because you were in some way not aligned with that beforehand. You were living some sort of limited life. Even if you think that that was a better life than what you're living with your illness, it was limiting in some way. Otherwise it wouldn't be happening. It's inviting you into more expansion. So I kind of wish I knew that. Like now it's obvious, like before I had depression, I was abandoning myself in every area of my life, especially my relationships. I did not love myself, did not value myself. Um, was really like, I got to work hard to receive. So it was just like opening me up to so much more. And I kind of wish that I knew it was happening for me, that every time something comes to the surface, it's happening for me. And that it was happening for a reason, not just to be suppressed back down. Well, and Anita is also mentioning, um, how do you choose the new and let the light in? It can be difficult to feel any lightness or answer in a state of depression or pain. How do you choose to let the new, how do you choose the new and let that in? And I think this is really where it comes to like what you said, like just the, um, that little 2% shift of I'm feeling this heaviness. It's okay. I'm feeling the heaviness is mm -hmm. that little, it doesn't feel like you're uh, uh, choosing joy. It feels like you're choosing just acceptance. Um, but it's the same mm -hmm. thing and it lets the energy start to move. So how would you speak to that? Like from that deepest point of pain and, and depression? Yeah, I, so I didn't start feeling like joy right away. Like when I allowed myself to feel what I was feeling, I just felt lighter because like people say that your level of suffering is equal to your level of resistance. So if you're even resisting it 2% less, you're already suffering less. You already feel lighter. Um, and when I had seen that like human scale of consciousness from Dr. David Hawkins and I saw and you can Google this for anyone who hasn't seen the human scale of consciousness before. But when I saw that willingness and acceptance was like a way higher frequency than like shame or like despair or whatever I was feeling, I realized like that's the jump there. Like when you're just willing to feel what you're feeling, that's a huge jump in frequency, a huge jump in consciousness. You already start feeling lighter because you're not in resistance to it. And that 2% shift is really what made all the difference because I wasn't 100% willing to feel all the pain. I was still doing the distracting thing with work or thinking I needed a relationship or whatever. Um, but even if I was tuning into my body a little bit, like doing just your ABC technique, I would do that throughout the day or just like do it in the morning. Okay, I'm glad you can relate to that, awesome. Yeah, it was just a 2% shift for me at first and I just started to feel lighter and then eventually I started to feel more joy. It, and I wanted to ask you during this uh, chat, I mean, when people are depressed, so in the medical field, this is like the big black box of don't go there, medicate at all costs, get them out of that state at all costs. If you have to lock them up, don't let them destroy themselves. You have to save that person. You have to make sure, you know, this is really serious. And so tell them to feel what they feel. It's like the total opposite in the conventional field. And one of the things I have realized with, with great clarity, you know, Ty Bollinger said this in the front end of his docu-series, The Truth mm -hmm. About Cancer. He was Watch on the first it. episode and they said, or maybe it was the second, and they said, um, to be a truly great practitioner, you must be free from the fear of losing your licensure. And I mm -hmm. thought that is, you nailing it on the head. I can only be truly great 
when I no longer have any fear of what the system is telling me I should be and shouldn't be and can do and can't do. And I'm like, that's not my authority. Here's my authority, self-authority. Mm -hmm. um, but in that, in that field, it's, it's a really challenging thing. And I, like I said, I've realized with great clarity that until I no longer fear <clears throat> that person, you know, they're suicidal and then they could kill themselves and I no longer fear for them or for me, I can't actually really make a difference for them because if I'm still afraid, <gasps> you know, you're going to end your life and then all the ways that won't be okay. And I'm still afraid of what that means for me, that I'll feel guilty the rest of my life, that I'll lose my licensure, that, oh my God, I shouldn't have said that thing because then this wouldn't have happened and I make it wrong. I'm actually adding fuel to the big fire of their wrongness. They're already carrying that's creating the depression in the first place. Yeah. And for me, I found it's a really, really subtle invitation with great, great compassion for when we are in that space. We can't, we can't just say, hey, just be positive. Like that is so far from the frequency of what we can hear when we're in that space. And mm -hmm. we can't just say, um, you know, like most of the things that you, you, people tend to say or try to suppress them further. Like, no, 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 don't do that. It's okay, your life isn't as bad as you think is going to just be more suppressive. So mm -hmm. I would like to know like what you would say um, to someone who's in that space right now, or maybe visits it in, in, intermittently um, that maybe they would be able to hear to let some of this in. Yeah. Um, so even when I had suicidal thoughts after I found this work, I, it was still the same thing. I just allowed myself to, have the suicidal thoughts and feel all the darkness like it was really dark and again the energy would move because emotions are just energy and you might think that if you allow yourself to feel all that darkness that then you'll act on it but the truth is really the opposite from what i found is when those thoughts would come up and i would feel that heavy and then i didn't want to feel it and then i would go to my mind that's when i would start thinking of like escape plans and actually want to like act on it but when I would allow myself to feel all of it, which was really dark, like I would, it pretty much looks like I'm like on my knees begging to be take, taken back from where I came from, to like make it go away. Like, I can't take this anymore. I just keep saying, I can't take this anymore. I can't take this anymore. But I like surrendered to that much pain. And it then it started to move and I would always feel lighter after. Even though you, you don't wanna go there, when you allow yourself to go there, it does move. So, yes. Yeah, so let's maybe share the ABC technique since we're pointing in that direction. And this is really yeah. like the foundation of all of my work. Um, when I had to put it together in a sequence, I could explain to others. This is how I have embodied my energy system, how I have brought consciousness into my physical form, how I have allowed powerful manifestation. Um, I kind of broke it down into these three steps, ABC, because having been an emergency medicine doctor, airway, breathing, circulation, when you're in your, you're like, whoa, intense moment, you've got to have a little acronym to guide you through. So it will think for you and guide you to the right steps and the right order. So um, the A is awareness, which is if you only do one thing, becoming aware of what you're sensing is the most powerful thing you can do. So if I'm like, whoa, this, this depression is so heavy and so intense. And I'm like, all right, on a scale of one to 10, how intense is it, Kim? And I'll be like, oh, it's like 20 out of 10. And then I'm just like, all right, let me have that awareness. I'm gonna just breathe and be aware and appreciate that awareness. Wow, this is really mega. Or maybe it's like a nine or you know whatever it is. And then I can feel also into how much tension am I holding in my shoulders on a scale of one to 10? So like just awareness alone is massively transmutive to let energies move. So instead of like holding them, you actually allow them to resolve and release. Um, so that's the first step is A. So whether it's like you just do a little body scan or you just go, hey, body, how are you? You tune in and bring your attention within you, withdrawing it from outside of you and bringing it to the space inside you, feeling, sensing, either body scan from like your head down to your throat, into your torso, down to your chest, your belly, your hips, down your arms, down your legs. And you're like doing a little scan of what you notice 
or you just, like I said, scale of one to 10, how much fear am I feeling right now? How much heaviness am I feeling right now? So all I'm doing is noticing. The second step is B, which is breathe. You're shifting your breathing from the fight or flight, contracted, tensing, control, running from the tiger, which actually prevents energy from moving, keeps you in a locked in state to allow the breath to come more into the belly, which turns off fight or flight, survival mechanism, tension, fear, and it opens up the healing mechanism in the body. So the parasympathetic nervous system can kick in, which has been shown to do everything from like digest your food with ease, kill viruses and bacteria, rebalance your brain so you have solutions, like everything healing. So if all you do, and I'm going to go to the most like extreme, you're like, ah, or you're really, really in it, 10 out of 10. So awareness might just be, hey, body, how are you? Breathing might just be, relax your shoulders a bit, just a little, you know, pull your shoulders up to your ears and then just let them fall. Even just slightly relaxing your shoulders lets more breath come into the belly, like the lower lung fields, and loosens up the, the fight or flight breathing pattern. Um, as you practice more, you could just like put your hand on your belly and literally feel the, the belly balloon out with the inhale and let it sink back in with the exhale. If you, if you were having a hand on your chest, you want to feel the belly hand moving a little bit more than the chest hand. But again, the way to do that is just relax your shoulders a little. And the more you soften your body physically, the more the natural breath pattern of belly breathing, breathing into the lower lung fields will kick in. So you breathe a little deeper, you breathe a little slower. And then C, which is actually like the least important part of the equation, is your conscious choice. So you may go to a, um, a tool of like, ask a better question. What would it take for me to embrace what I'm feeling fully? You might go to the tool of EFT, where you're like, tap on your body. You're like, body, I love you. It's okay to feel what you feel. You may go to a tool of... Um, <laughs> like the shakedown is one of my favorite. I think that's a, that's an instant elevation program too. Where you just give your body 30 seconds of like sh literally shaking off the energy. So you get an energy recalibration. So there's a lot of tools in the, in the instant elevation program I put together that walk you through this. And then embracing health, we go much, much deeper. And that's where I work with you privately to guide you through this work and answer your questions. And you're actually integrating this over a year, but even just the basic or even just in the book, um, just kind of reach for a tool of conscious choice, right? Like how could I choose to live more fully instead of suppressing this? Um, they keep it really, really simple on the, the choice. But incidentally, this is where most people put hundred percent of the energy is do the tool or, um, you know, make a new choice or cognitive behavioral therapy. They're trying, trying to make a change, but you can't do that if you're not in your body grounded in awareness out of fight or flight and shifted into presence, parasympathetic breathing, then choices available. Yeah, that helped me so much. I use it for everything. <laughs> <laughs> Liam is saying often practitioners don't allow their full range of emotions because they don't allow themselves to feel their range of emotions. 100% mm -hmm. spot on. You can't give others something you don't have. That is the 100% of what I'm doing in my practitioner groups. It's like your own embodiment is the medicine. It's more powerful than you could ever imagine. Well, so how has this affected um, your your life? I mean, you can share more about what you found because you have access so much more power. Um, it's massively affected my life. I was thinking about everything I received. First of all, a lot shifted in my life and I could mention those things, but there are things that I received that are like, priceless that if I knew that this is what depression was inviting me into if I knew that this work was inviting me into that I would have been way more willing to feel what I was feeling and those things that are priceless that I received are that I know how to move through my emotions with ease now I know that my emotions are just energy and when I allow myself to feel them that they just move through that's priceless because I am a highly sensitive person I, I feel things very deeply and I would always live in fear that 
something would upset me or something would trigger me and I would constantly try to control my environment like if a song came on that reminded me of something like turn it off or don't go to places where I have painful memories like constantly living in control because I didn't know that I could go through my emotions with ease so that is really priceless um the fact that I know that I'm powerful and that we all are and not as like some fluffy idea but like actually seeing my reality change and respond to me when I just feel what's arising for me because everything out there is just a reflection of my consciousness, my energy, the frequency I'm giving off. So when I allow myself to feel what I'm feeling and the energy moves, my reality always shifts. And it's so crazy to see that you are that powerful and to actually know it. So every time you have a problem in your life, a challenge or lack, you know it's not this big thing that you need to control, but you know where your power really lies and that there isn't anything to fear. So that is really priceless. And being more connected with my wisdom and my intuition that was something i didn't even think i wanted i didn't even know that we had that wisdom i didn't know we were powerful i didn't know any of that beforehand so yeah just the fact that i know that but more so that i'm connected with it because your wisdom is what is like guiding you to your inspired life keeps guiding you back to your true nature which is love and joy abundance vitality so when you're connected with your wisdom it's like it's like there's less detours. It's like the quickest path to your inspired life. So like, why would you not want to be connected with your wisdom? And especially now with what's happening on the planet, I'm so grateful that I'm connected with my wisdom. Otherwise I would be looking outside myself for the answers like most of the planet is doing right now. So that is like priceless. And um, also that I know that our true nature is love and joy and abundance. That's something I didn't know. I kind of felt like I had to work hard to receive or push myself. And this work is all about like not pushing yourself, like allowing, cause this is already available for you. This already is your true nature. So those are like the priceless things that I've received and they've helped me so much, especially right now with what's happening on the planet. If I didn't know how to move through my emotions with ease, like I feel like I probably would have taken my life during the pandemic because I've been feeling like isolated and alone, not because of like the restrictions, but because I feel like I'm more aware and I know what's happening and uh, all the people around me are not aware and they're really like they're asleep. And so it makes me feel really alone. Like the way it's made me feel is like from Harry Potter in the fifth movie or the fifth book where he like knows that Voldemort is back, but nobody else knows that. And the media is making it seem like he's crazy and they're calling him the boy who lies instead of the boy who lives. And he feels so isolated and alone. And then Luna says to him, if I was Voldemort, that's exactly how I would want you to feel because then it's less of a threat if it's just you. And so like, that is kind of how I've been feeling is really isolated and alone. And if I didn't know how to move through those feelings, I probably would have taken my life. And that's probably why a lot of people are taking their life right now. Mm during the pandemic. Well, I'm going to insert a little piece on that too, for those listening who may be in that potential space. Um, th th this is the way I heard it spoken not long ago by a, a, a great master that said to the ego, the ultimate escape is death. And that when we're in the ego, which is like, I'm a physical body. I have a end and a, be a beginning and an end. I'm limited. I'm separate death is the ultimate escape and we're all heading toward it, right? Like if we understand mm -hmm. I'm an infinite being having a physical experience, I'm not my body, there isn't this intense fear, right? It's just not gonna be there. If we don't have that, we can't not live our whole lives in fear. And we also will keep diverting to that quote escape hatch, which isn't actually an escape hatch at all because this, life as you know it will dissolve and then you're still there and the energies that are yet unresolved to work it out in a different way and i'm not of the belief that now you're screwed because you did this bad thing you shouldn't have done no 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 no, no. i'm just of the awareness that it is a delusion that that is actually an escape for anything um it's not so once you realize that and you're like all right like shut like shut that door or that 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 space that thinks that's an escape and like i already get it that's nothing it's just a delusion that that is an escape kind of like when neo is in the matrix and he's in the car and he's with trinity and that you know they're like we're, we got to check you for bugs and they put a gun to his head and he's like wtf 
who are these people? And he opens the door to get out of there. And Trinity says, you know where that road goes and you know exactly where it leads. You know, that is not where you want to go. And he doesn't really know what the heck is he doing here? Who are these people? Can I trust them? But he knows with utter clarity that that is not the way that that, that road is an emptiness of mm -hmm. a long way to nowhere. So he's got that clarity on board. So he actually shuts the door, stays in the car and finds <laughs> the, the, the whole the whole opening of, of awareness um, that he moves toward. But I think we all kind of got to in some way come to that awareness of like the struggle and the delusion of um, death as an escape mm -hmm. is, is not ever actually true. It's not an escape. Where is the escape is in uh, realizing I'm not my body. I'm not these emotions. So it's okay to feel these emotions. It's okay to sense what I'm sensing in the body. And so to soften, which is kind of what you did when you were those intense throes of the contraction and the constriction and the suffering of like, please get me out of this, uh, to actually soften, let something else come in, something higher, the higher part of you come in that can allow a rearrangement, can allow a, a physical, hormonal, neurologic rearrangement. So now I'm in a state of 2% more peace, which is really what this work is doing. It's like constantly elevating your frequency and allowing a rearrangement. But how do I surrender and allow that? I think you shared really beautifully what, what your journey was. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. wanted to also have you just share, like, what would you say to your back then self that maybe you would have been able to hear even just a little bit? that could have really made a big difference? There is a few things that I wish I knew. Um, the main thing is that allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling is what allows it to dissolve. So if you could just be 2% more willing to feel it, even though that's not where you want to go, um, I would say like just get curious and try it. And you will see that you will feel lighter once you allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. I would also say to honor your body when something feels heavy, like trust that, that that's not what your body's asking for. Even if you don't know what's next or what to try next, and you're really like desperate to heal, at least honor what your body's telling you in this moment, which is this is not the path and this feels heavy. I wish I knew that because then I wouldn't have tried the antidepressants, the whole all the stuff I was doing with my psychiatrist, it would have really shortened the whole experience if I had honored what my body was trying to tell me. And if I had at least shifted my perspective, you say this a lot to people from I'm doing this to make my pain go away to I'm doing this to love and nurture my body and to feel more alive because that is why I had depression for so long is because everything I was trying was just to make my pain go away. So if I had done even one of those modalities with more I'm doing this to feel more alive. I'm doing this to love and nurture my body. I'm sure I would have seen a shift much sooner. Um, I would also say to that person that this is happening for you to awaken you to way more in your life, to expand into way more. And that what's on the other side of this pain is like all of your heart's desires. It's like, you had said this in one of your programs. I can't remember if it was in Embracing Health where you like write a letter to your body and you're thanking your body for honoring your heart's desires when you weren't because I was so shut down and abandoning myself like no tomorrow. And the only reason the depression came was so that I would stop abandoning myself and open to so much more. So I, I really wish I knew that. Um, I also wish that I knew that changing things on the outside was just a temporary relief and it wasn't actually gonna shift anything. And that I really, my real power was just in allowing myself to feel what I'm feeling. And then the energy moves every single time. That is a very powerful thing to say. I think the one thing that could be maybe a little more universal that people can hear what, that you said was to shift from doing this thing to make my pain go away, which is just more suppressive, which if depression is because of the suppression, it's not going to do what you want. Mm -hmm. And instead doing this to nurture my body, that it is, I think, the most powerful thing that we can possibly do in that one shift. Yeah. Um, someone is talking about the the webinar we had recently for chronic fatigue and, and pain. Uh, we do also have a live webinar we're doing on the 20th that you're all invited to. 
um, which is kind of going deeper into what we're talking about here. And I'll give you some specific tools to play with. Um, and it's at drkimd.com forward slash, actually, I think it's forward slash workshop. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, drkimd.com forward slash workshop. And that's a free, uh, a free workshop. So it's kind of set up for, for us to just do a little bit deeper integration of the actual work and tools and answer questions. And so that will be something really valuable if you want to get a little bit more of the experience with this. Um, do you want to share just any other last things before we finish, Alicia, that maybe we haven't touched on? What was your experience like with embracing health? Um, who would you recommend this for? Because I know for some people, like you said, you're thousands and thousands of dollars a month in therapy. Or I know for other people, it might be like more over years and years of, of time. Um, sometimes people kind of need to understand like what this investment is, what it creates, and why would this be a good fit for me? Yeah. Um, well, working with you privately is like priceless and mind blowing. It's it's not just this work that I think is really powerful because it points you back to your own power. So it, this is not just like another thing outside of yourself that maybe you've tried beforehand and then you need to keep coming back for more. Because when I first started the Embracing Health program, I would like count down the days until the next Embracing Health call because I felt so heavy and I felt like I needed it. And I just needed like my Dr. Kim fix. And that shifted within a few months because this work really does point you back to your own power and how to move through this on your own. So then when things would come up for me in between the embracing health calls or in between sessions, I was able to move through it with ease on my own, even things that were really, really massive. So this is not just another thing outside of yourself. If this is resonating with you, it's inviting you to more expansion. It's inviting you to your own power. So you know how to move through any challenge in your life with ease, anything that comes up with you with more ease. But also just working with Kim privately, like you're the most intuitive person I've ever met, that it's like, it doesn't even compare to any type of therapy I've tried in the past because you can feel into our system and know what is keeping us stuck and then harmonize it right then and there. Like there's, I've never found something that powerful that quick. And it's not like a guessing game like it was with other practitioners that's like trying to analyze me and maybe this is what it is. So like maybe this is what your body needs. But with you, it's like you're tuning into my system because you're that intuitive and you have that much awareness. Like this is what your body needs. This is what's keeping you stuck. So it's like the quickest, most powerful type of therapy I've ever tried. And every time I have those moments with you, I'm like mind blown after like, how do you know these things? And I have this like overwhelming urge to wish like that the whole planet knew that you existed, not just that this work, because this work is really powerful in the way that you share it, that it's not about pushing or trying harder or fighting, but just like moments with you are priceless to work with you live and to have someone that can tune into your system so you know exactly what it is, that that is uh, priceless and the most powerful thing I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Jessica said, I felt the same way, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you. That, that was really beautiful. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. I appreciate that. Well, and, and we have um, the way we've created it going forward where I'll do, we'll be on a Zoom call. So everyone will have private time with me. We have the opportunity for private time with me within those group calls. And it's a really great way of doing the work because everyone will benefit from like one person's sharing and one person's integration. It's not like, oh, now I'm going to deal with your thing. Everybody else wait over there. It's very much like connected. Everyone will receive what that one person is receiving. And mm -hmm. there's sometimes these parts of you that you didn't even realize were in you that you're holding. And then for one person's resolution, they're kind of doing the work, I'm, I, we're doing it together. It releases so much in you that you get as kind of added, added bonus that maybe wasn't even what you came for. Um, especially, you know, we see a lot of these like side things when people are like struggling with their health or anxiety or depression. And then it's like, oh, well, if we could also get resolution in my relationships, that would be freaking awesome because this is a major important thing as well. In fact, someone was asking earlier about what changes did you see in relationships with? I think I think is worth sharing because I know yeah. you were in one space with like how you were doing relationships to show up as like, what do I have to do to get love? What do I have to suppress in order to stay in this relationship and get love versus where you're at now? 
Yeah, beforehand in my relationships, I was so willing to abandon myself. In the relationship right before I had depression, I had dated this guy for like three years that I stopped being attracted to within the first few months. But yet still I stayed in that relationship like just totally willing to abandon myself and then in the relationship after that like i would never say what i wanted or what i was feeling because i was afraid he was going to leave because he had extreme anxiety and he would leave he did leave and come back and leave and come back because he was just reflecting what i was holding um so now i am no longer willing to abandon myself in relationships i actually know my infinite value and worth like before and kim's helped me move through this it was like my value was the things that i know the things i've accomplished what i look like like all these things outside of me but now i actually feel my infinite value and worth i love myself unconditionally i honor my body i'm not willing to abandon and betray, betray myself in relationships um and even like with friendships like there's been shift there as well like i was feeling really like i said isolated and alone because i feel like i see the world differently than than the way most people are seeing it right now um but even that has shifted where it doesn't like what this work has invited me to is unconditional joy and unconditional love which is our true essence so nothing outside of me actually needed to shift in order for me to feel that my friends didn't need to show up differently for me to actually be able to enjoy myself with the exact same people with my life exactly the, the same way because now i'm connected with myself while i'm with other people so now i actually enjoy myself when i'm with others um and my relationship with my mom shifted like right away after I had worked with you on that and we had worked on like the guilt and stuff like that it was like night and day different after that so yeah this work even if you're not coming to this work for, for your relationships your relationships are going to shift anyways because <laughs> everything responds to you mm -hmm. so when you shift your energy your whole reality shifts in all areas of your life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you so the workshop, someone's asking for the workshop link. Again, I put it there. It's drkimd.com forward slash workshop. That's what we'll do on the 20th. Joanne said, beautiful, Alicia. So happy to have met and shared with you in Arizona. Great job today. Spoken from the heart. Aw, thanks, Joanne. Yes. It's great meeting you Thank too. Thank you from person in Facebook. This has helped me so much. You make me feel calm listening and your work resonates with me so much. And someone from Nottingham, England is joining us. Thank you. If the Embracing Health program resonates with you. Oh, thanks, Ellen. Ellen's saying, if the Embracing Health program resonates with you, I would highly recommend it. It has changed me as a person. And subsequently, my health is improving. Definitely the best decision I've ever made. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Norma is saying, Alicia and Kim, what an inspirational woman you are. This is such a powerful and helpful sharing. You're both so articulate and aware. Very grateful for you both for discussing so much that I can relate to. Alicia, it helps to hear how you used Kim's programs and sharings to address your challenges. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you, guys, for being here. So we, we have um, the hello, Teresa. And I want to give a special hello also to Lisa. I worked with Lisa many, many years back when we started a medical school and Tennessee. So it's so exciting to see you here. And I forgot that I helped your ankle heal. And um, that's just such a cool, it's so cool to connect with you. Um, so the, the workshop will be on the 20th and we'll talk more about um, embracing health as a, the program. If that is something that resonates with you, the link for that, if you want to feel it out a little bit more is at drkimd.com forward slash health. It starts in June, it runs for a year. We do Zoom calls once once a month where we will interface directly. So, like I said, you'll have that private, you know, personal one-on-one -on -one connection. It's not private; it's in the group. Um, but to actually shift these spaces that you may not be aware of, it's really very powerful, and everyone benefits from whatever one person is is moving through really profoundly. Um, so that is beginning in June. It's at drkimd.com forward slash health. Um, and then Miriam saying three people in my family committed suicide when I was younger. I saw one scene that was full of blood. Is it possible I took on some of that energy? Yes. Yeah, so anything that we haven't integrated is still there in the system. Like we're protecting ourselves from it. I mean, that's a horrifying, horrifying experience. So we like block part of it out. 
And yeah, we're like blocking part of ourselves out. So now we got to like protect ourselves from that. Um, I'm going to share an experience that happened last week because it's a similar thing where there was this story someone told me that was so horrifying that happened to this individual. And just hearing the story, I, I will tell you like just that frequency of it was more horrifying than anything experienced as a trauma doctor, than anything experienced in the pediatric ICU, which were some of the real greatest horrifying things I've ever had to even imagine. Um, this was, it hit so hard that I could feel myself wanting to jump out of my body to not feel what I was feeling, to not experience the horror of what this person experienced. Mm -hmm. And I, I was actually sitting in the chair because it was with my hairdresser, like feeling I was going to jump out of my skin. And I was like, Kim, breathe through this. And my system was like, no freaking way. We're not integrating this. I want to give this experience to someone else. I want to push it away. I don't even want to think about this. But that was very discordant. Like there was no way I was going to do that. And I realized all of a sudden I had to actually soften my body and let in what this was. Cause it, I, it's not that it's happening to me, but you know, the idea of it is still like triggering um, in this way to actually be like beside that person and find the compassion for myself to move through all the emotions that came up, all the fear that came up and literally let the experience in right? What we're taught is like, bump it out, bump it out, medicate, suppress it. I had to let it in. And I ended up, it was maybe a couple hours where it still was like reverberating, but in about like 12 seconds, letting in all of those emotions, letting in the experience as if it's my experience, releasing the resistance and like literally letting the intensity move through. It's like birthing a baby, but who I birthed myself to be was a, 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 a mother with more compassion than I ever have had before and less fear, right? Because when we're willing to meet what's arising, we have less fear. We find our courage. We find our compassion. That, that's our strength. And it was, um, oh, it was like a massive catharsis. You know, when they say when you're giving birth, it's like you're trying to put a watermelon through a hole the size of a grapefruit. A grapefruit. Mm -hmm. um, this was like that on an energetic level. It was like I had to expand myself way out beyond what I ever thought I could let through. But to do that, like, cleared so much in me and it changes you. So when we stop resisting and we actually find like, I am powerful enough to move through this. What do I need to receive to move through this? What do I need to open to? What do I need to let go of to move through this? Those are always the questions to begin to, um, to asking Joe's like, can you move through it in stages? It feels too heavy. Yes, 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 yes. A hundred percent because yeah. you know, where, we're always in a a relationship with what's happening. Yeah, and like I didn't really go there on like how like dark it was in the moments that I actually wanted to take my own life or that I wanted to be hospitalized actually for a really long time. I thought that I wanted that because I didn't want to like do life anymore, but I just wanted to just be alive for the sake of my family. Um, there was like even a time where I was going to take my own life it was kind of ironic because we were like planning to go to an escape room with our friends, but I was like not planning on being on the planet for like another hour. Like I was planning the ultimate escape from life in the back of my head and knowing exactly what I was going to do when, when this person left, I was with my boyfriend at the time. And the only reason I didn't do it was actually because the way I was gonna do it wasn't gonna work. Like I Googled it beforehand and it wasn't like a foolproof way that was gonna work. And I actually like Googled like painless ways to kill yourself, which is really sad that that's like even available online. Um, but like that was like pretty much the reason I didn't do it in that moment. Cause I didn't know of a painless foolproof way that was like available at that moment. But I hope that helps people see that when you're even in like that much darkness, like you can still move through that by just leaning into it and allowing yourself to feel it. When I have suicidal thoughts, they always move when I surrender to it mm. and I feel mm. lighter after. And I actually even feel more alive. I see like the beauty and the things around me. Like it really, really does shift. Yeah. And yeah. Very yeah. And forgive that. I have had to like forgive that I am this kind of person who operates this way, who carries this heaviness I've had to like forgive it because how many ways we make it wrong. And then it's like my burden, but that's not really true. That's just going to feel really heavy because it's not true. 
this is a uh, really profound. I think there may possibly be people who find this who are in that space searching for something. And I, I think we've treated it with great compassion. And <laughs> thank you so much, Alicia, because this is something I've wanted to touch on for a really long time, especially because most doctors stay away from really meeting that. It's too scary mm -hmm. as a practitioner to even allow the possibility that someone could have heard you wrong and then done this thing and then it's your fault yeah. because it's so wrong. I'm not going to see it as a wrongness. I'm going to see it as just, it, it's a choice. And um, it isn't the escape that we think it is. It isn't at all an escape, but have compassion for the part of you who wants an escape because it's pretty dense what you're moving through right now. And it does, it's like a hero level courage. Give yourself a big celebration for even being willing to breathe through it one breath, let alone, you know, maybe three breaths. Um, to just see if you can allow a little bit of softening so, you know, energy can dissipate. But but I will say for that, you know, like that story I heard, sometimes we just got to nurture ourselves through that integration. So, you know, for the person who saw people in a scene, you could try some tapping, but you've got to do it to like, I love you. I love you. It's okay. You felt this. It's okay. You saw this. Okay. You're scared. As opposed to, I'm going to tap to make this memory go away, right? Which is maybe it will work and come back. <laughs> it will be limited at best. It's not the same as the compassion that this part of you really needs. Well, someone asked, how did you tap into your intuition as even after following various practices just doesn't seem easy. Um, I'll just say that like it started to feel really heavy to buy into what I was being told to do. And I had just kept trying all these other things that weren't working even though i didn't realize that the heaviness was telling me this is not what my body was asking for and i didn't know what was next um i just honored that eventually it just got too heavy and wasn't resonating with me and i stopped doing all of those things and then that's when kim's work came to me i didn't go searching for it i didn't have to try to find it mm. um it literally will come to you and come through you when you open and soften just a little bit more so even if you aren't like, in touch with your intuition, like it will still happen for you when you it's, open a little bit. It's a good question. How do you surrender? What does it mean? We're going we're gonna to complete in just a minute here, but I, I think some of these things could be helpful. Just if, I just if I just think of physically softening my body, you, I'm going to feel things more, not less. And so if I'm willing to breathe and feel and sense, that's what lets energy move. So that would be like the simplest way I can say how to find surrender we don't need to make it too complicated, but we'll go deeper into this um, for sure in the workshop. So you can sign up to be there. If you know that embracing health is resonating with you, you're invited for sure to be a part of that as well. Thank you so much, Alicia. You are such a little angel in the world. You're so beautiful. You're such a precious, precious person. I love you so much ever since I first interacted with you. Thank you. I love you too. Honestly, so grateful for you. Alicia also is in the mind body community and she's assisting with our social media and our communications and things like that. So you can find her um, in our forums and stay connected with Alicia that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. I'll be here every week at 11 AM mountain time for mind body TV. And we'll continue with our mind body miracles series for the next few weeks. Lots of love. Bye. Bye.